Mm, back to our making games this time, not playing. No, 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 no. <laughs> of course, I'm going to be playing games also on this channel. We're going to play more Magic and all that. But today, we're starting a new series. It's going to be the first video in the tutorial series where I show you how to make everything. Because I'm making a game. I don't know if you knew that already. On my main channel, there is a video about that game that I'm creating. So if you're interested, go check that out on my main channel. So, on this channel, I'm going to be posting two kinds of videos. I'm going to be posting tutorial videos, which is this is the first of the, my tutorial videos, and then I'm going to also be posting videos uh, like vlogs for that game. But this is a tutorial video, this is just a general video uh, if you want to learn a little bit about Make Human and see how useful it can be. So why, why, why are we using what Make Human and what is Make Human? Well, Make Human is this program right here. You can create a human mesh and then we're going to import it into Blender, we're going to import it into Unity. All these programs, by the way, are free, so you can download them and try them out. And the reason why I think Make Human is pretty nice is that if you're not super good at sculpting, like I'm still learning sculpting in Blender, I really, I'm really not that good at it yet. So if you're not that good at sculpting, it's a little bit difficult to create a human mesh from scratch, uh, in my opinion, in Blender. If you're really, really good at Blender, you might be laughing and say, no, 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 it's super easy, I don't know. But uh, for me, that's a little bit difficult, and I think that for a lot of people, that has the same background like me, that are engineers so that are used to programming and not that used uh, to creating meshes and stuff like that. Uh, like in the past, I've mostly used the asset store for Unity to uh, get all my assets. Uh, but now, now we're gonna do everything from scratch. And I think Make Human has fills a nice niche there. So, here we are in the main window. And what you can do here is, of course, you can manipulate this character in other ways with sliders, which is very, very handy because it makes everything so much easier. Uh, so of course it's a male and female uh, slider, so you can, uh, we can go male here for instance, we can uh, change the age, and add some muscle here, a little bit of weight, now this guy is looking boof, <laughs> a little bit too old maybe. Ah, there it is, I'm making myself of course, <laughs> I'm buff like this, right? Height, of course, I'm very, very tall. So <laughs> It's like The Sims <laughs> and Caucasian. Okay, this is essentially me, right? <laughs> no, it says everyone. Okay, gender. Uh, here we can go into... Oh, this is uh, more if you're interested in boobies. <laughs> if you create a female model, you, you can go for that. But we're gonna go into face here. Uh, you, by the way, you can tweak everything. Like, you can tweak uh, the arm's length, the finger length, like, everything is tweakable. So if you want to create a character that looks like someone or some, some famous person or whatever you want to create, uh, you can create that in this program. I would say, though, that I think it's a little bit easier to make some manipulations in Blender rather than make it in progra this program, but we're gonna talk about that later on also. So... Uh, there's a lot of sliders for uh, head shape. It's just, I'm going to create like a typical RPG character. You can also see the uh, the size. Let's see if you can see it here. Uh, okay, it's, well, two and a half meters. Maybe that's <laughs> a little tall. Okay, this is more realistic, maybe. 190. Uh, yeah, exactly, uh, exactly my length, as it so happens. I'm very tall. Uh, let's see here. Go into face, and here we're going to go. Uh, we can zoom in on the face. Scroll wheel, by the way, to... Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, you, you aim where you want to zoom. I'm, I'm used to Blender. I'll try to shift uh, click with the, the um, middle mouse button. That did not work. So, uh, we're gonna go square and we're gonna go a little bit of uh, inverted triangular. You can see how face changes. Yeah, this guy looks cool, right? <laughs> Super cool. Uh, and then there's a lot, like you can see here, head size. Uh, there's so many sliders. If you want to tweak something, eyebrows, uh, you, you can tweak everything, uh, essentially. Wow. <laughs> That's the perfect eyebrow. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to show you all the sliders, because I th I'm sure you can figure that out by for yourself. That's not going to be the most interesting part of the video, I guess. So, I'm going to talk about some other more useful stuff. Okay, so, what you can do here is you can use built-in stuff. Like, I, I tried and downloaded different stuff. Like, you can import clothing and stuff like that, and it will somewhat fit to the character. But I found that that way is... <sighs> There's better ways of doing clothing. I'm gonna make clothing tutorials. I think that's gonna be the next one, or the video after the... Two or three videos or so. We're gonna get to how to create clothing, and it's not that difficult to do, and you can create them to your exact specifications, exactly what you want, so... The, like... The random chance of you finding some clothes or something. You can find them under... Uh, where is it? 
community here. Here we can search for assets, you can download them, and that's cool and all, but uh, I think for most people it's going to be more beneficial to use or to create the clothing themselves in Blender. I think that's better. Uh, unless you have no specific needs at all, and you, you, you're just fine with casual t-shirt look or something. <laughs> then I guess this works. So, anyways. Geometries. What is important there? Uh, since we're going to import this into a game engine, I prefer the low poly eyes. Uh, if you have some kind of zoomed in version where you can really see the eyes, I guess the high poly eyes is fine, but otherwise, uh, I think low poly is nice. Uh, the guy doesn't come with hair unless you add hair. You can uh, do a ponytail here if you want to. Uh, here, I've actually gone ahead and downloaded the Maxwell hair. You can download hair and stuff like that also. <laughs> Okay, okay, it's gotta be this here. This hair is schmexy. Beyond belief. Uh, also, the model doesn't come with teeth unless you specify it here. Uh, if your character is not going to talk, it doesn't need teeth because you can't see into the mouth. But um, if you have talking characters, then uh, you could add a teeth base here if you want to. Uh, but keep in mind that there's no use in adding teeth if you're not gonna use them. It's just a waste of, like, you, ha you get another model... For your character and there might be issues uh, I don't know with clipping or something so only add teeth if you need teeth on the character is my advice you can uh, import them later on also uh, then we have topologies and this basically is how detailed your mesh is but also it's it's like how how the polygons are connected you, you can see on the pictures like seeing you can see here at the, this there's a preset for the the muscle guy uh, then there's a low poly version <laughs> that you can go for here. Uh, I kind of, kind of like the low poly, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and then we have the eyebrows, of course. Uh, the guy doesn't come with eyebrows unless you add eyebrows. So if you want eyebrows... Wow! <laughs> I didn't know I wanted these, but now I know. Okay. Uh, of course you can make him, uh, you know, more serious if you want to. <laughs> you don't have to. Also, if you need this, if you want uh, small eyelashes. Personally, I don't feel like eyelashes are even visible. It's hardly eyebrows. It depends on how far, like if you're an RPG and if you're quite far away from the character, you're probably not gonna see too much of the eyebrows. You could probably just uh, color in something on the, on the mesh itself if you wanted to add eyebrows, because it will become a separate geometry uh, which, of course, will be a separate draw call in Unity and everything. We're gonna talk about performance and everything later on. Uh, not in this video too much in Unity, but we're gonna talk it on later on in this series that, that we're gonna do. And there's a tongue, and uh, again, if you're not gonna open the mouth of the character, as you're probably not gonna do, it depends, you know, uh, if you're going for that, uh, then you can add it there. So, uh, then we also have... The rig, and that's very, very important, because we're going to import this into Unity, I would suggest that you go with the game engine rig. This, uh, when we export it, it will say that it's, uh, it won't detect that it's a humanoid rig, it will be set to generic, but you can just change it in Unity to humanoid rig, and it will work with this rig. Uh, there are also rigs which support, of course, mouth muscles and everything, so that you can talk and do stuff like that. But we're going to go with the game engine rig, uh, and... Is there anything else to talk about here? <laughs> Thing that I that I know. Of. Yeah, there's also skin, and there's different skin for different like different complexities for different um, for like if you're if you're an older man or if you're younger, you will have different skins and stuff like that. And I also suggest that you pick one of these and not the default one, uh, because in my experience, when I export this. It doesn't export a texture unless I've selected a, a specific texture. I don't know if that's a bug or if it's just me clicking the wrong place or something. Uh, but we're just gonna go with this because this just looks so good. <laughs> and then... Okay, then we're gonna go to the export tab. And here we have a couple of options. And the only two that we're gonna use are gonna be Make Human and Film Box. If you export straight into... Uh, Sorry to do uh, Unity, you're going to be exporting in Filmbox. Uh, Unity can read Filmbox, it's not a problem, you can just drag and drop into your character, into Unity, and you can use that uh, from there. But what we're going to do is we're going to export Make Human, and then we're going to import into Blender, 
Uh, and then I'm just gonna show you how it looks in Blender. The reason why I want to show you this because I think that this is the workflow flow you should go for. I don't think you should try to kind of add things in Unity, try to add armor and connect to the bones. I think that's way too difficult to do. I think that the workflow that you should have is you should export and make human import into Blender, create your armors, your clothing and everything in Blender, and then export from Blender into uh, Unity. But you can export straight into Unity if you want to with Filmbox. It's probably more useful though if you have, uh, you know, clothing on your character. Unless it's... <laughs> Unless it's some, uh, <laughs> some giggity game. So now it's time to jump into Blender. This here is Blender. This is how I'm gonna look when you just installed Blender and you've got your cube here. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to move around and everything. I can even open up this and we can go to start display so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just pressing the middle mouse button uh, to be able to uh, move around like this. I think I need to move myself over else you won't see what I'm clicking on here. Uh, so let's move me uh, here, I guess, is the less ob least obtrusive place to be in Blender. So, middle mouse button to move around, and the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this cube. Uh, by the way, if you're new to Blender, you can be in different modes. The most useful nodes, modes are gonna be the object mode, the edit mode, and we're gonna talk a little bit about post mode later on. Uh, there's more modes also, but th those are the most important ones to keep in mind. So if you if it looks like this, for instance, for you, uh, then you're in the wrong mode. I think you can still delete, but then you will just delete the vertices. Vertices, you will not delete the object itself. So if you click on the object and you click delete, or you can also click X, uh, then you can remove the cube. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna import the uh, make human mesh. But in order to be able to do that, we need to first have an add-on installed. So I'm going to go to user preferences. So under add-ons here in preferences, there's going to be a make human importer. But you won't find the importer unless you have the importer installed on your computer. So either you can Google just Blender import MHX2 and you can find the file there. Or hopefully there's going to be a link in the description to where you can find these files so that you can import them uh, for yourself. And then after you've imported them, and you also need to put them in the add-ons folder on your uh, of your blender installation uh, then you will find these make human runtime import clothes make target make walk i just checked all of these i think it's only this one that i really needed but uh, the import runtime so like import make human files so that's and out of the way that it's is... finally time to import the make human mesh we're gonna go to file we're gonna go to import and we're gonna go to make human and then we're gonna navigate to the place where we save that file of course and this is going to be test u and of course this guy is going to be huge because we shows a decimeter as the length here if you use meter will be much much smaller and here we can see the rig that we've ported and everything uh, we can also delete the lamp here because we're not gonna need that and uh, we can delete the camera and this is just if you want to work in blender and if you want to have uh, do the rendering there and everything you, you can have those but if you're gonna import this into unity you're not gonna need those uh, you're gonna have to delete them every time because if you have a camera in here then that <laughs> camera will be imported into unity and it will be set as the main camera so that's just super annoying so we're not gonna do that uh, here you can see the different parts of course we have the body part which is the skin of the character this is the armature uh, and since we're in post mode right now the, this here to switch uh, we can uh, just just to show you we can move the different joints and everything uh, Control z to uh, undo any action low poly is your eyes the short is the short hair and teeth of course is the teeth uh, just to show you, just to make some kind of alteration to this before we import into Unity. I'm going to create a separate tutorial, by the way, on how to create armor and everything. I'm just, just gonna make something super duper simple, just so that we can uh, have something, some kind of difference uh, when we import this into Unity. So I'm gonna press 1 to go into uh, front view, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Uh, we're gonna go into edit mode. And you can also press tab to go into edit mode, for some reason I keep clicking on this button. Then I'm gonna uh, press Z, and this is so that we can select vertices on the other side of things, otherwise we're just selecting uh, vertices uh, at the front. Then I'm gonna press B, which is the selection tool. I'm gonna grab an area right here. I'm gonna press Z to go back so I can see what we've selected. I'm gonna select these vertices here. I'm gonna make some nice shorts for this guy. I'm holding down the middle mouse button uh, to pan around there and let's let's give this the guy some nice shorts before we 
<laughs> before we go into Unity. Press 1 again. Go back here. Uh, then we're gonna press Shift D to copy this selection. Press uh, left mouse button to confirm. Uh, then we're gonna uh, press P and gonna separate by selection. And this will create a separate item, uh, which will be this item right here. Body, and we're gonna call this shorts. And we can just add some simple material to this. We can remove the old material from the shorts. We can add a new material. Just makes them some... Oh, beautiful red. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> and then we can go into the shorts. We can go into edit. Uh, we can press one... Uh, press on any of the vertices. Press Control L to select all the vertices that are linked. Uh, select this tool, which is the scale tool. Scale them up a little bit. I know it's not gonna look, you know, amazing <laughs> or anything, but that's not really what we're going for. Uh, now it's time to go to File. We're gonna go to Export. We're gonna go to FBX, and we're gonna export on this computer, and then we're gonna jump into Unity. Here we are in Unity finally, and I'm gonna head and I've done a couple of things here. So first of all, I imported a everyday motion pack. This is just so that we get some animation, so that I can show you that it actually works with animation and everything. And then I've also imported... Where did this guy come from? This guy came from the folder uh, or wherever you put the Blender out, wherever you save the Blender file. And where did the texture folder come from? The texture folder came from where you exported the Make Human file. There will be a textures folder there and I recommend you copy it inside here. Also, this guy will be set to generic initially, but set him to humanoid, else the animations won't work. So, set him to humanoid. Next! What are we gonna do here? We're gonna go into the scene view, we're gonna drag in the beach guy, we're gonna rotate him 180 degrees. We're gonna move him a little bit away from the camera, we'll see a little bit closer. And as you can see, he's gargantuan just because we uh, uh, chose decimeter earlier there. So, uh, he is very much see through. Why is it see through? Well, it's because the skin material doesn't work. I don't know exactly why this is, but it happens every time. So we're gonna go and unpack the prefab so that we can change the prefab. And then we're gonna go into, uh, here we have the body, which is the body mesh. We're gonna go into the skin material. And you can't see, unfortunately, when I record, you can't see the window, but it's gonna be a pop-up window uh, if I click this button here, where you can select material. And then of course, from the textures folder, you're gonna select that which says old light skin, if you just follow the tutorial. And now we have the skin material. And we can go to the body, and we can drag in that material, and now it looks pretty decent, I would say. So, of course it doesn't look perfect, that's because we don't have a normal map for this. But I'm going to show you now how to create a normal map for this character. So we're going to go into GIMP, if you, if you don't know GIMP, you can also do this in uh, Photoshop, if you're more used to Photoshop. I'm going to show you how to do this in GIMP, because it's a free application, you can just download it. So, let's jump into GIMP. We are in GIMP, and I've just gone ahead and I've imported the uh, texture file that we got here. So we're gonna go into tools, uh, or no, we're gonna go into colors, we're gonna go into uh, hue saturation, and we're gonna drag the saturation down all the way. Uh, and then we're gonna go into colors, and we're gonna go into curves, and what we're gonna go do here is we're gonna drag up uh, the whites a little bit, and drag down the... Just to make a little bit more of a contrast image. You can do this in many, many ways, but that this is how I prefer to do it. Uh, then we just press OK. On this, what we need to do is we need to install a plugin for GIMP. There's going to be a link down in the description uh, on how to create a normal map. And if, when you got that, you can get this window that you see right here. It's going to be under, let's see, under filters, map, and then normal map. And when you have that, you can get the normal map window that we have here. And here you can select a couple of filters, but I think the... Uh, and it, it will change the look a little bit of... Uh, uh, the normal map, but I think the four sample is fine for what we're doing. So you're just gonna click the four sample, we're gonna click OK, and it's gonna create a normal map for us. Then what we need to do is just need to export it. Uh, so now we're back in Unity, and I made, went ahead and made a couple of changes just to make the scene look a little bit better. So first of all, I added a point light which was orangey, and slightly above him, and a blue light which was slightly below him, just to make the scene look a little better. Also went into edit, project settings, player and I changed the color mode from gamma to linear just to make it look a little bit better. Then we're gonna go into skin and we're gonna select the normal map. You can't see the window unfortunately, but it's gonna select the normal map that we exported from GIMP to make uh, the skin look a little bit. If you're ad really advanced you can make your own skin shader to make this look a little bit better. Uh, but the last thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a controller. So we're gonna go to create and I don't think you can see this, <laughs> this unfortunately. 
but we're gonna go into animation controller uh name it anything doesn't matter <laughs> i literally named it anything uh we're gonna go into open and we're gonna get our animator window here and we're gonna go into the everyday motion pack and here we have some uh let's go mail share that's uh i think the perfect perfect thing i want here uh why isn't this oh okay it's divided into okay so here are the actual motions okay so let's go interaction uh mail handshake perfect mail handshake let's drag that in there uh, indoor animator and let's see here go back and here we have the anything which is now going to do the mail handshake go back to the scene go back to beach guy drag up the controller and now if you press play hopefully it's gonna work oh wow <laughs> this is the most <laughs> most awkward animation choice ever so next time I'm going to show you how to create different races for a character that we can do with blend shapes that we can then use in Unity. So we can, for instance, increase the value here, which makes an elf, for instance. You can also use this uh, to make character sliders. Here we have the demon, and lastly, we have the orc. So, look forward to that, and see you next time.